Hello, welcome to the Crafting Sheds. I'm Ruth from Beltane Gifts and today's video is going to be something a little bit more complicated than my usual ones. I thought since we've been doing some very simple projects it was time to do something just that little bit harder and basically if you've had a go at some of the other videos you can definitely do this. So we're going to be making this little guy. This is a green dragon head. Go. He's taken me about five, five and a half hours. It's not that complicated, but there is lots and lots of stabbing involved. So if you've got a multiple needle holder, I can't use them. I always break the needles, but if you can use one, definitely do. It'll speed things up a lot. You're going to need a base to work on. For me, I'm using a plywood shape that I've cut out and I used a scroll saw and mouse sander just to kind of get the shape that I'm after. That's the shape I'm going with. You don't need to use one that looks like this. You could use a circle or an oval or a rectangle. Um, just something solid to attach it to that can take the weight and that you can hang. So I've drilled a hole there, just a simple hole to put a, a nail or something in. Once you've got your base, we need to build up the shape to go underneath. So I've got a selection here of different shapes of upholstery foam and one of which I've already had a bit of a hack at. And what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm just going to use it to create the head and nose. If you have a look from the side there, this is just the natural thickness of the foam that I had. If you've got thicker foam, brilliant. For my one, I'm going to have to actually do some cutting. So I'm just going to kind of lay it there so I get an idea of a general shape and then I'm going to kind of use the different foams to build up what I want and what I want is just kind of a nose coming out and then going into a bit of a point so I've got a couple of bits of this out the way of pointy foam uh, just from previous ones that I've made so I'm going to go for the shorter one now if you have a look at this it's not well shaped it's it's very rough but that's okay because what we're going to be doing is covering all this with some wool fibre, filling in the areas we need. So we just need the basic shape. So I think the, this is going to be the size of the head that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to trim this and it's just as easy as using some scissors and just having a bit of a, a hack basically at it. Any bits that you cut off, keep hold of those. And I use those to fill out head shapes and things if I'm doing them, filling gaps. So we're not gonna waste any of it. Okay, I think that's a better kind of shape for me. Now the next bit's gonna be the nose. So I'm just going to cut out at an angle because I want it to taper in for the nose. So at the corners, I'm just gonna cut these just off at an angle and then just smooth those out just by snipping off some of the edges okay and I want kind of a pointed bit on the end as I say so I've got my pointy bit there and this is going to overhang almost like a beak so I'm just going to round off the edges again and I think I want more of a point here so I'm going to come in now, don't worry that this is looking very, I don't know, uneven and not very symmetrical because that's kind of part of the charm of these dragons. They're not going to be perfect. They're going to look quirky and a little bit malformed. And yeah, it just gives them more character, really. If you wanted to do it more precisely, then go for it. That's definitely up to you. But for me, I think this was going to be the shape I want. Now, what I will do, though, is I want to do some nostrils in the sides here so I'm going to cut those out now and I'm doing that just by doing some little snips and just working my way in and then you can literally just reach in and just tear and I might bring this in just a little bit there we go so we've got some holes there for the nostrils so once you've got your pieces what we need to do is stick them together so I've got my trusty multi-purpose impact adhesive um, I get this from Screwfix but you can get it online as well and I'm just going to use a little bit of this if you are going to use this just be careful and use it in a well ventilated area just because it is solvent based and we don't want you getting high <laughs> that's what biscuits are for so yes I'm moving everything that I don't need out of the way I've got my scissors I'm just going to use those to open it up and this is kind of an old one. I don't know what I've done to it, but it's gone a bit weird. So if you're using it, it should be a little bit less goopy. 
but it should do the job. So I'm just going to use my trusty stick and just spread some on here. This probably isn't the best glue to use to do this, but it's what I've got and what seems to work for me. So, Dad, I'm sorry, but yeah, this is what I'm using. So make sure you've got it where you want it. Oops. Give it a good old squish down. And then I'm going to add the nose on. Now I'm not going to go right to the edges with this just because if I did when I'm stabbing because I'm not going to wait for it to fully dry um, the needle could get stuck a little bit so I'm just going to do it mainly in the centre there okay so that is our basic shape that we're going to be using what we're going to be doing is adding some fibre to bulk out our dragon face shape and normally I'd use cool wool, but because I'm stuck at home, I didn't think to bring any back with me last time I visited the shop. But I do have some of this, which... Can you see that? There you go. Um, this is carded Shetland top, something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to be using some of this to bulk things out a bit. Just mess that up. And basically what I'm going to be doing is looking at the, the glued on shape. And just filling out any of these sections that need bulking out a bit to start off with just to hide these joins and just to smooth out the whole shape and then we'll start working on features so for this I'm going to be using my largest needle to start off with and just see how I go this is just a large generic needle Ooh, finger protectors so I'm going to be starting with this and then if it doesn't go through the foam very well I'll just move down to finer needles so all I'm going to do is take my roughly messed up fibre, just kind of hold it in place with my thumb and step round the outside edge. Can you hear that sound? It's a lovely sound. I enjoy this sound. Anyway, this is the sound of stabbing fibre into foam. And as you can see, it's getting pushed in quite easily. So I can stick with this needle, which is great news. Now I'm not overly stabbing this, what I want to do is just make sure it's firmly attached without affecting the shape too much because I haven't decided what I want it to look like yet so I can always just mix things up once this is covered. Now because what I'm doing is stabbing this fibre into foam, it's not technically felting into the foam, what it's doing is it's just attaching there and the pressure of the fibre being pushed into the hole is causing the the fibre to stay put. Now what you can find after time is that it will come loose or come out so what you really want to do is cover the entire shape with the fibre and then the fibre will start to felt into itself so you'll end up with like a complete net almost of fibre over the whole shape and the more you stab the more it contracts and joins together and the more firmly it's attached so that in the end it won't go anywhere. Now I'm going right up to the wooden base and what you need to do is just be careful when your needle is near the wooden base because if you stab directly into the wood there is a chance you'll break your needle so just be careful when you get to that section just take it slow and if you need to just point your needle get the angle so that it's parallel <laughs> so that you're stabbing parallel to your base and just tucking the fibres up and under. Now, because the nose here is trying to escape, it is firmly attached, it's not quite how I wanted it to be. I'm doing quite a large section of fibre, and what I'm going to do is lay it over the top, hold it in place, and then stab, oops, stab into this section here. Um, what I'm hoping to do is to create that net that goes over the top, and then as I stab it will tighten, and it will just make sure things stay secure. So if you see there, the fibre's starting to tighten up just over the end of the nose there. And I'm just going to keep adding fibre and filling in the gaps until I've got a complete coverage. Okay, now what I'm just doing here is, you can 
can see there's my nostril that's the end of the front lip so this is going to be the bottom jaw area here so whilst I'm having a good old stab I thought I might start defining this just so I know where things are so what I'm going to do is just keep stabbing quite close together in a straight line and just going over this area just so that it just shows so if you can see that there I can't tell but yes and again we will be bulking this out more later but um, it's just nice to know where things are going to go and I'm going to do the same on the other side too it's still very very basic but you can see that it's starting to take shape here we've got the nose we've got the bottom lip so what I need to do next is work out where I want my eyes to be just because that's going to kind of dictate what I'm going to do with the rest of it I'm thinking probably about here and here I'm just going to just go for it so I'm thinking about there and about here now I would really like to put safety eyes in this but I don't have any here with me <laughs> so what I might do is just add some black fiber for the eyes and you'll just have to imagine that they're shiny <laughs> so I've got my black roving and same as usual I'm just going to pull off some sections and just mess it up and if you haven't seen any of my other videos the reason I'm doing this is because when they have um, the fibre carded all the fibre starts going in one direction which is wonderful if you're going to be spinning with it if you're going to be making something 3D like I'm doing um, what ends up happening is that when you stab into the fibre if it's all going in one direction the fibre splits and you don't end up catching as much of it as you'd like so what I recommend is just pulling it apart just getting it down to the natural fibre length and just messing it up and twisting it and just really working it and this just starts that felting process and gets those fibres going in different directions and then when you stab you catch fibre going in all different sorts of directions and it just knots them together faster it just makes felting so much easier so I'm going to take my fibre and I'm going to split it into two equalish parts it's easier to do that now than it is to do one eye and then try and match it later so once you've got your fibre I'm going to just lay it where I want it and what I'm going to do is a couple of stabs right in the middle first and that just anchors it in place and then I'm just going to catch the edges and just tuck those into the centre a little bit and then I'm just going to work around the outside in a circle Okay, I'm going to get the other eye to the same stage. Okay, I'm just having a look from a couple of angles just so that I know where everything needs to go so that they're kind of in the same space. Matching our lines up. Okay, now I'm having trouble getting my thick needle through, so I'm swapping down. I'm going to try my finest needle. Now, this is a 38 gauge star. You can just use a generic one. Again, this is just what I've got on my my needle holder at the minute and I'm just going to do some little stabs all over it and I'm trying to get it to be curved so I'm imagining that there's a central point right in the centre of the eye and when I'm stabbing I'm going to work around it you can see my cam uh, needle angle changing there so that the needle is always pointing towards that central point no matter what angle I'm stabbing from and this just gives us a nice curved dome effect So I've done that for both eyes now. We've got our 3D eyes. One does look a little bit larger than the other, but we're not going to worry about that. Again, you can spend as long as you like on this and get it as perfect as you want. But um, I just want to show you the basics. Now, what I want is quite a large brow ridge. So I'm going to fill that in using this grey fibre. Okay, so I'm going to be taking sections of this and again, messing them up. And this time I'm going to give it a bit of a roll. I want kind of like a sausage shape and I want it to go round the eye so I'm just going to kind of pinch it in place to start off with use my big needle and just stab around the outside edge first just to anchor it in place and this just gives me a bit more control over where everything's going to go and I'm doing it around the eye first I'll save the back for later because I can move that fibre where I want it but this line here is is the important one
go so we've got our curve there around the eye and now I'm just going to use my finger sorry my thumb just to hold the fibre where I want it and then stab around the other side there we go that's better and this also acts as the dragon's eyebrow which is where we get a lot of our expressions <laughs> our expressiveness from so yeah we want something that we can shape and move around and just give this dragon real personality so I'm just going to do the other side as well now okay there we go that's given it a real kind of wide-eyed <laughs> expression it looks quite like a hatchling I think so I think what I want to do is bulk out the top lip a little bit and possibly the nostrils as well I'm just going to use exactly the same technique I'm going to use my brown fibre uh, just taking sections, messing it up, rolling it into kind of sausages and attaching and don't worry too much about getting the fine shaping done at this point we're just getting fibre where we need it once we cover it with the green we're going to be able to put in some real detail now with the top clip what I'm doing is attaching it to the side of the face first so that I've got all my fibre kind of loose I'm going to work my way all the way along to the end by the beak because so we want this to be quite firmly attached before we do the next step there we go then what we're going to do is we're just going to get it and we're going to roll it and what this does is it means that we get a nice roll of fibre that we can tuck under by stabbing back along that line you can see it there the line there that we did to define the mouth we're just going to get our fibre and just keep stabbing it catching the next layer up and stabbing it into the same spot and because we've attached the top bit first that's pulling against it rolling the fibre under and giving us a nice firm roll of um, extra fibre that we can now shape from above there we go so now I can play about with that if I want to later and just kind of change the size of it reduce it down if I need to if I wanted to add any more to it I'd just do exactly the same again and if there's any loose fibres from where you've attached just stab over and again little stabs close together just to smooth out that surface so I want to add my extra side to the nose as well so I'm just going to do as I say exactly the same Okay, so I'm just going to increase the back part of the nostril to give it a real kind of flared effect. So I'm going to start with a big needle again for this just to attach and I'm going to attach around the inside of the nostril first and just make sure that's nice and secure. Okay, and then where we did our line between the two nostrils before, I'm just going to work along there and then work my way back and round and basically bring it round so it meets with this uh, top lip okay so that's a hugely flared nostril we don't want it quite that big so same as we did with the lip I'm just going to catch it and tuck it down So I'm just going to go over now with my little needle. I'm going to work over the whole thing and just kind of get it where I want it. I think I want it just a little bit higher there. So I'm just going to stab down the back here. And as this tightens, it'll pull things back a little bit. So I think that's giving me a nice large nostril to work with. Hmm. I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did for the lip and the nose on the other side and see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. I've been going over the head here. Now if you notice, it does look a bit different. What I've done is I've added the lip and the nose to the other side. And then I've gone over the whole thing with my needles and just brought everything in, shaped things a little bit here underneath the, the chin and done the same all over and just brought everything together, really flattened and smoothed it out a bit, just defined all those shapes and um, it's ready now just to be covered with a different colour. 
it's time to add the eyelids now with the eyelids here I would normally use roving just because it's got longer fibre lengths and it just makes this technique I'm about to do a lot easier unfortunately I've only got carded fibre so I'm just going to have to make do and I'm also going to be using one of these which is a metal awl AWL and this is a metal spike that you can use just to hold things in place or to split fibres anything you would be tempted to use your felting needle for but which might break your felting needle so these are kind of heavy duty you can't really break this unless you're really trying so it's perfect for this sort of thing now I'm using quite a large section of the fibre because I want to completely hide the eye before we start so I'm just going to lay it over and with my thumb I'm just going to pop it in the centre of the eye big needle and what I'm going to do is just stab around in a circle so you can kind of feel with your needle where the eye is go okay, and we want this to be really firmly attached before we move on to the next section so that's now firmly attached we have to work out which way we want our eyes to be open where we want the lids to go I want it to be along here so what I'm going to do with my my awl I'm just going to pop it through the fibre and just kind of create a hole go and I'm just moving backwards and forwards just until I can see the black of the eye underneath so once I've got my hole there with my big needle again I'm just going to go into the corner of it and I'm just going to stab it just at the side there so all again just going to split it open again and work just to the corner and again stab it into place so what we're doing is we're just splitting the fibre open so that we're creating that gap that we can use to widen and make our eyelids so now we've got that bit of gap there I'm just going to catch really carefully I don't want to put any pressure on the side of my needle and I'm just going to catch those loose fibres at the side and stab them down same at the other corner and then what we can do is just tuck our needle just underneath the green not catching any of the black fibre we don't want to catch any of that we're just catching the green and I'm just stabbing up and you see how that raises the eyelid there we can do the same for the bottom one and what this does is it's just rolling that fibre down a little bit and then what we can do is just stab underneath again and around the top and there we go we've got our eyelids now if I wanted to move them slightly I can just bring these corners down a little bit and up a bit if needed there we go once that's in place I can just start stabbing this extra fibre in I'm just doing it roughly with my big needle I want to go over the whole thing with my finest needle just so that the holes aren't as obvious so this is just tacking everything down now just keeping it out of the way now if I want to desire to be open a bit more I can always just stab down and up and where you stab and how you open the eye will add to the character and the expression so if I, I stab up here he looks a little bit worried whereas if I was to stab up here he might look a little bit more angry but I'm quite liking the kind of the worried look so I'm just going to play to that Okay, so I'm going to do the same to the other side and then we're going to start covering him in the lighter green fibre. Okay, so I've added the other eyelid. We're ready now to cover the whole thing using green fibre. It's a really simple technique, so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do one little bit and then we can fast forward. So I'm just going to take a small section of the green fibre now this is carded so it's a bit rougher than the roving would be and the fibres are shorter so I don't need to mess this up I just need to take a section of it lay it where I want it to be and then I'm still using my big needle at this point at the edges I'm just stabbing as close to the board as I can just against the board almost just to tuck in the loose end and then I'm just going to stab really roughly just over the whole thing and what I'm doing is I just want it to stay in place at this point what I'm going to do is cover the whole thing first then go over it using my fine needle and when I'm completely covered all I'm going to do is just lots of little jabs close together I'm not going too deep 
just lightly over the surface and what this will do is it will just felt everything together and give us a nice smooth covering over the whole thing without changing the shape too much and if you find you've got any little areas that are just not as well covered as others you can just add another piece of fibre over the top. I have covered him, there we go. There are a couple of patches that just need retouching that I will get round to eventually and I thought I would have a go at adding some low lights. Now I have got quite a dark green or I've got a blended one which isn't quite as different but I think yeah I'm gonna have to go with the darker green. <laughs> so I'm not going to use too much of this I don't want to overwhelm him but I thought I would add a few bits just inside the eyelids. Is that the right word? Anyway in here <laughs> just you know to add a little bit of definition so I'm not going to use too much because you will see once I start stabbing that it really is quite noticeable and I'm going to use my fine needle for this so I'm just going to catch just the ends and just felt it in just to the the creases there and then I'm just going to take a little bit more actually I'm going to try some of this let's give it a go And I'm going to add it just above and I'm stabbing not in a straight line but um, kind of widely apart so if you see the difference there how much wider it is than the first section and I'm using quite a low angle with my needle just that I'm using all the side of it just to catch the fibre okay, I'm going to make sure that this is nice and firmly attached because I want to blend it a bit more so once it's really firmly in there lots of little stabs close together what I'm going to do is get my awl again and I'm just going to catch the fibres just loosely I'm just kind of loosely brushing over and this only works if it's really well felted in if it's too loosely felted what happens is you end up pulling the whole thing off which we don't want and I'm catching the dark green as well as the blended just kind of brushing over with the point of the awl and what I'm trying to do is just spread those fibres out a little bit I'm just working outwards towards the outer edge catching those fibres and just spreading them and what this should do is just help with that blending effect. There we go so if you see the difference between the two that's giving us much more of a shaded effect. Yeah. Now I'm going to do some of that just under the chin as well. With this I'm just going to use the, the blended and I'm just going to just stab around the outside edge first of the shape I want to create so I'm creating kind of like a dip in the centre there and normally I would catch these loose fibres here and kind of bring them in but I'm not going to do that this time I'm going to let them stay loose so that I can just stab them further out and that way you get kind of a gradient as it goes from the darkness at the, the centre there outwards now I'm stabbing quite deeply here because I want this bit to be indented you see from the side um, I want there to be kind of like a dip there just to create that kind of gullet effect go I'm also going to use some of the really dark fiber just around the, the inside of the mouth there just to really define where the two parts of the mouth meet so I'm just going to pull off a couple of little strips and just lay them in and in this case um, I don't need them to spread out too much so I'm stabbing mainly in just the line and a little bit to the side and then I'm just going to go over that and really thin it out there we go now I'm going to do the other eye um, if I was going to do some little ridges or just some lines across the nose or across the lip which you would see in some of the older style dragons then I would probably use some of the, the blended fibre there just to define them just so that um, they really stood out but I'm feeling that this is quite a young dragon so I'm not going to go for any of the wrinkles for him I shall be back in a minute once I've done the, the rest of his face there we go so as you see I've just added in some extra shadows here and just to the side of the eyes as well and I think he could do with just some lumps on his head there as he grows older they would turn into spikes at least that's what I see in my head so 
I'm going to take some of my green fibre. Let's get rid of some of this other stuff. I'm just going to start off by just attaching the fibre here to the top of its head. And I'll be using my big needle to start off with. Okay, so I'm just going to stab around here in between the eyes. And I'm kind of using the, the shadows I've just added as a, a gauge of where the centre point will be. And then I'm just going to stab with my needle 45 degree angle pointing towards the nose so I'm kind of stabbing the fibre back on itself and what I'm doing here is I just want to attach it but I want to bulk up the fibre here in the centre so this way I'm just kind of pushing it towards where it's attached and then I'm just going to stab down the other end just against here and this kind of leaves him with a bit of a mohawk very in right now. There we go. Now I want to do a couple of lumps going back. I'll go for three. So working from the side now, again at an angle, I'm just going to stab in, catching the fibre and just pushing it towards the centre. And then I'll work from the other side as well, again stabbing towards the centre. And what this does, it gets the fibre and it pushes it inwards, which brings it up. Just gives us more to work with. Now all I have to do is decide where I want my, my little lumpy bits to be. So I think the first one, just stabbing straight down, just across, as you see there. And then I'll just cut this one in half, I think. So same again, straight down, 90 degree angle, stabbing quite deeply. just going to swap to my finer needle and I'm just going to work my way around each of the bumps working my way up as well so what I want to do is just go over all the fibre and just bring it down and in there we go so you can see there it's starting to form a nice little nubbin um, I'm just going to do exactly the same for the other two okay so we've got our little ridges there now if you wanted to make them into more like spikes um, there is a video that I've done on how to make cones and it's basically the same technique you would just stretch them out a little bit and all I've basically done is worked my way around with the needle pointing in and just created a bit of a dome shape again I've got a video on how to make domes if you can't do those already so what he needs now really are some ears now we're going to do those as flat felt so we won't need him for a minute what we will need is our felting pad so this is the one that I have which is filled with rice it's just a cloth bag filled with rice turn that round there we go and I'm going to be doing them in the same colour again so pale green and because this is carded I'm not going to need to do quite as many layers as I would do if I got roving. If I was using roving, I'd probably do about four layers. But I think with this, two should be enough. So I'm just going to pull off a small section there. So I've got my four sections. I'm putting two aside. These are going to be for the next year. And find it's handy to kind of measure out the same-ish amount of fibre if you're going to be doing two things that are going to be similar sizes. So we'll save those for later. These ones I'm going to spread out. I've got one going... From left to right and the other one going from top to bottom and I'm laying them across each other and this just gives our, our fibres once they're felted together a bit more strength. So I'm going to start off with my big needle and I'm going to outline the shape I want. Now for this dragon I just want a small ear and I'm going to have just a line with a curve. Go and then I'm going to do another little curve here and another one and another one so basically going to have a couple of points with the curve and then this is the section here where I'm going to attach it to the head so we're not going to want this fibre in the curve so I'm just loosening it up a little bit so that I can fold it up and stab it into place should be wearing my finger protectors so I'll do that in a minute and I'm doing the same here and the same for the last one ok 
okay and then the bits at the back I'm going to fold in as well as I've stabbed them into the cushion that I'm using they're kind of attached so as long as you're not too rough you can just kind of smooth in your fibre and it'll hold the shape that you want to keep now this section here where it's going to attach to the head I'm not going to over felt this um, I want to leave that quite fluffy because I'll need something to attach it to the head with everywhere else though needs to be quite well felted so I'm just going to go over just to get the basic shape and then I'm carefully going to peel it little bit by little bit don't just grab and pull because what you'll find is the whole thing will stretch and you'll lose your shape so just gently just ease it off turn it over remember which bit you're going to be keeping to attach to the head and then just felt over the whole thing again okay you're going to peel over uh, peel off again you'll need to do this regularly because otherwise it'll stick to your your cushion you won't be able to take it off and we're just going to keep turning it over and stabbing it i'm going to move down to my finer needle in a minute and just keep going until it becomes nice and firm now i'm starting to run out of steam a little bit here if you can use a multiple needle holder I would definitely recommend using it for flat felting like this um, it cuts down the time and it's um, yeah you don't have to stab as much unfortunately I can't use them I've tried every time I do I break all the needles so uh, yes I'll be using the one needle but if you can use multiple needles at once definitely do it okay so you can see from the side there it's starting to felt up quite well um, you'll start to notice that it won't stick to the cushion as much and that's because as you're felting it all those loose fibres are getting sucked into the felt itself so there's less to get caught in your cushion um, it's going to need a few more passes over yet but I'm going to show you how to make the other one before my arm falls off <laughs> okay so we're going to lay the fibres out like we did before take the ear that you've just done place it over the top and we're going to use this as a template so stamp around the outside edge just be careful you don't felt the two together same as before just fold everything in and stab it into place and then just do exactly the same as you did for the other ear until you get them both to the same stage okay so I have done the ears now they are quite fluffy around the outside edge don't worry we're going to fix that I definitely will need the finger protectors for this one so pop on your finger protectors pinch the ear between finger and thumb with your fine needle what I'm going to do is just put the needle in between the finger and the thing that you want to stab so in this case the ear and we're just going to do some little jabs just between the two so if you have a look there that's the bit I've just done and you'll just need to keep moving it around pinching reasonably firmly not too firmly as you go and what this does it just uses the the little notches in the side of the needle to catch all these loose bits of fiber and just to felt them in so it smooths up your edge gives you a nicer cleaner edge and um, gets rid of the fluff I have gone round the outside of the first ear and you can see sort of like the difference there hopefully you can see the difference there between the two so what we're going to do now is just lay them together again just make sure things are kind of in the right position and we're going to do the same for the second ear whilst we're holding the first ear <laughs> the trick with this is just pinch them together and make sure that your needle is definitely towards your back finger with your already felted ear towards you and this way you don't end up felting the two together and what you want to do is just to go around the outside edge and just bring things in so that the two ears are the same size and shape don't worry too much if they're not identical it's with the dragon that I'm doing it's based on the, the ones used in the illustrations the Terry Pratchett books and they're very quirky dragons there are our ears we just need to attach them to our dragon there he is I think he's quite a dopey dragon kind of sleepy so I'm going to do them kind of lower down and I want them kind of upwards a little bit so I'm just laying it against the back there the fluffy end that we haven't felted yet 
I'm just felting that down towards the gap where the head and the backing meet. I'm just tucking the bits in and then just going over it. Go and then similar position on the other side. So if I do it up a bit more, I'm just stabbing in and just aiming for that gap there, tucking that fibre in. And I think just to make doubly sure, I'm going to swap to a fine needle and just go over and um, same on the other side. Now if I'd wanted to I could have done kind of veins in a slightly darker green just on the ears. Um, that too would be quite nice but I think in this case I'm just going to keep them quite plain and youthful. A little tip, if you find that you've got little holes in your ears from where you've been stabbing them, just with finger and thumb just pinch them together, give them a little rub and what this should do is just move those fibres and rub them together and just fill them out a little bit more and it just hides some of those holes. Um, and there is our little dragon. Now I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Also any questions, any comments, I have rushed through some of these bits so if there's anything that you're not sure of just pop it down there in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you're not already subscribed then definitely have a think about pressing on that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any future videos.